The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm going to be discussing and sharing with you several clones of Pac-Man. I'm a huge Pac-Man fan, I've actually been playing quite a bit lately, but a lot of people don't know how many awesome games came out in the 80s to try to mimic the awesome gameplay of Pac-Man. So in this video I'm going to share several different amazing games with you, so sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the video. Ladybug was one of the better clones in the 80s, and it has you gobbling up various things, including letters and hearts for bonuses, avoiding poison. Also, you are maneuvering gates around to avoid enemies. It was a really cool strategy that made this one a lot of fun to play. Now, this was a great game, and many of you probably played this on the ColecoVision, but some of you may not know there also was a homebrew for the Atari 2600 done by Champ Games, it is fantastic. So the ColecoVision version is pretty close to the arcade. There was small sacrifices made. This was a game that did very well in ColecoVision. Actually sold many consoles because of this great offering. Now, Ladybug on the 2600 is amazing. It's done by Champ Games. They did several other ports, arcade ports to the 2600. Has all the enemies of the arcade. Various aspects have been graphically slightly sacrificed, but for a 2600 game, it is an amazing job. One of the better arcade ports offered. An early 80s arcade game, Lock and Chase, has you as a thief collecting various coins, money, and treasure on a gaming playing field, avoiding the police. Gathering the money in the middle causes the police to pause where you can escape. Collect all the coins and then you escape top or bottom of the screen. Now, there's a 2600 version and an Intellivision version as well as a Game Boy 1. The 2600 and Intellivision cartridges look near identical, which is kind of interesting. Lock and Chase was played by many people first on the Intellivision. And this is a decent arcade port. It was popular on the Intellivision as Intellivision was needing arcade hits. This is a fairly common title to track down. Well worth it. Next up is a fairly uncommon arcade game in which I didn't experience this till the 90s. And this is Mousetrap replacing the Pac-Man themes with mice, cats, and dogs where you're collecting bones and then you can morph into a dog to eliminate the cat enemies. Kind of a strange premise with cool sound effects. There is a Intellivision and ColecoVision version of this game both are excellent, highly recommend them. Now, the 2600 version of this game had two variations, and one was released later on the right there in a like a maroon box, and pretty decent. What I like about the 2600 version, while the graphics are inferior to the arcade significantly, it still has fast gameplay. In fact, almost faster than the arcade. And using only one button, you can unlock doors, this game is easy to get and recommend checking it out. It's kind of funny that Alien ended up being kind of like a Pac-Man game. No, this is not scary. No, this is not the best Alien game. But for a maze game, it's pretty good. 20th Century Fox had cool packaging and this one sold fairly decent. Now, there are a few differences between this and Pac-Man. So you have a flamethrower where you can stop aliens. You grab pulsars, which weaken the aliens, and you can smash over the adult aliens. The little dots that you see on the screen are representing alien eggs that you're smashing. Then there's a freeway level where you're just trying to navigate to the top to gather the prize. Pretty tough. Jawbreaker is another Pac-Man clone for the 2600. There's different versions of this game on different consoles and classic computers. I really like this one. The gameplay consists of you controlling a set of teeth, avoiding smiley faces, gobbling up candy bars. That's right, use your imagination. In the middle of the screen, a vitamin appears in which then you can gobble up the smiley faces for a brief amount of time when they change color. I really like this game. It's an example of great gameplay using simple graphics. I liked it. I liked it better than Pac-Man on the 2600. There are eight stages in this game as the enemies get harder and harder. Well worth checking out. Now, up next is an Odyssey 2 favorite of mine, Casey Munchkin. I had mine signed by the programmer that created it. Ed Averett made over half of the Odyssey 2 library. Fantastic. 
goal is to gobble up the munchies on the play field, 12 of them. There's special flashing colored munchies in which you can eat the munchers. This was too close to the real deal. Atari didn't like it. Sue. Every console had to have a Pac-Man clone to sell. If they couldn't get Pac-Man, they had to make one, and that is Clean Sweep for the Vetrex. Now, it has an interesting premise in which you are avoiding evil bank robbers who have just blown your bank to smithereens. And so you're a bank president, you only have a vacuum available to recover your money, and you have to uh, gather the money before the thieves destroy you. The thieves get increasingly anxious, and so uh, this is a pretty interesting Pac-Man clone. I thought it'd be... Now, your vacuum bag is limited on what it can hold. You start to see it grow. Eventually, you cannot hold any more money. You will have to redeposit the money by entering the vault in the center of the screen. Kind of a fun mechanic. It makes this one a lot of fun to play. Or you have access to playing on an actual Vetrex. I know it didn't sell well. This is a lot of fun to play. I like the different varying gameplay aspects of this one, a good Pac-Man clone. One of my first experiences on the TI-99 4A was Munchman. And I actually have the rare Munchman 2 as well. I want to show some gameplay, pretty hard to get. Munchman was a very common game back in the day and one that many people remember playing. It was very popular and it's the opposite of Pac-Man where you're actually connecting all the passages with a chain. And so you go over the TI icons and then you're able to eat your enemies called Hunos. <laughs> Pretty interesting, but it was a lot of fun. A very common game, easy to get. Now Muncher 2 is not common, very rare. And it is kind of closer to more of a traditional Pac-Man with a couple differences. Now, there are two separate screens that you need to gobble up before you clear a stage. Also, there's a roaming teleporter. Pretty cool, it'll warp you to another part of the screen. Next up is Devil World. This one had Miyamoto himself as one of the designers. Pretty awesome game in which you're gathering crosses and using them to defeat enemies while the devil himself is on top and he's controlling his minions to try to squish you as the maze is continuously moving pretty cool there's a lot going on in this game and so it's got two main parts the first part is you gathering crosses to try to clear the screen you cannot attack an enemies unless you have a cross Second part, you are gathering Bibles, again with the Bibles, you then are taking them to the center of the screen to seal. You can attack an enemy with having a Bible in hand. This one, back in the day, was not released in the States due to its religious theme. It's fairly tame by today's standards, a definitely a decent Famicom game to check out. Next up is Fantasy Zone The Maze, and this one is a rather late entry, 1987 but it's a decent Pac-Man clone and kind of a weird one. You know, Fantasy Zone, known as a shooter, kind of decided to go with this theme and it's a decent one, decent sound. You can choose your level at the beginning of the game. And once you choose your level, you then go to a maze. So in this game, you have various different weapon upgrades that cost money as you gather the money as you go through the maze and defeat enemies. So it's kind of neat. It's a really colorful game. It's just this weird premise though. Like I wouldn't think of a fantasy zone game and think of like a Pac-Man maze style game, but they did. They did and it was pretty decent. As you collect money, you then can go to shops to purchase things to wipe out enemies. You can also get different power-ups. This is one where you can comment into enemies to defeat them and gather money. I really like this game. I didn't play this game until the mid 90s. Fantasy Zone fans, check it out. I tried to focus on games that offered a little bit different gameplay experience other than the blatant ripoffs such as Jelly Monsters for the Commodore VIC-20, Muncher on the Bally Astrocade, as well as several others on classic computers. What are your favorites? Comment below as I would love to hear from you. Several games that I showed in today's footage are games I like to revisit often as they are great classics to pick up and play for anybody. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. 
please stay safe. This is the immortal John Hancock. Thank you so much and you take care.